All right, what's up guys, welcome back. So today we're doing a little daddy-daughter day. Mom and the boys are out shopping and me and my daughter are gonna be in here pulling this engine apart and we're gonna look at the ring gap. I don't really feel like I wanna gap the rings, but I would like to see what the ring gap is just in case and wanna check a couple of the bearings. So we kind of putzed around a little bit, did a little bit of cleaning. I don't know if you guys know my workbench before, but it's a lot better now than it was. And we also got some more of the garage cleaned up. So we made some space here and we're gonna pull this engine apart. If you guys don't know, this is uh, an aluminum block 5.3. It's like a 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. Spins over pretty good, but we just wanna pull it apart and look at everything. So the cross hatching and everything is looks really good inside the cylinders. There are some water spots, but nothing that I'm really concerned about. So just wanna check the ring gaps and just make sure that they're not way too small because it is gonna be turbo. And then the plan is to put the thing in this car. So right now it has a iron block 5.3 in it. We're gonna be doing some different things with this, throwing this engine in there, but let's get it apart. All right, so we got the motor flipped over and then what's the first thing we're gonna do? We're gonna uh, take the oil pan off. Yeah, we're gonna take the oil pan off. So we got all the tools laid out basically that I think I'm gonna need for this. So I got a 10 mil, a 13, uh, some feeler gauges, torque wrench, I do have the tapered compressor for when we decide to put these things back in and I'm using a 7 16 on a, a half inch ratchet just to pull the pistons out. So I'm going to go through and zip all these oil pan bolts off. You want to hold all these bolts for me? Ooh, that's a good idea. It's stuck inside there. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, but I'll zip them like this and then, and then pull them off. Okay. Oh, yeah, I might have to twist them out a little bit. So this engine is very uh, muddy. So I'm kind of curious to see the guy I bought it from. He said in his post uh, that uh, it's missing. It's missing all of the rear bolts, so that's interesting. He, he said in the post, which may be a good thing, uh, that he would recommend like replacing the bearings in the oil pump, but he said that he's never been inside the motor, he just took the heads off of it. Daddy, did you see that it was muddy? I did see it was muddy. So, I could take that a couple ways take that a couple ways really if I wanted to that he's just like being a genuinely honest guy and saying like hey I've never been inside this thing and it wouldn't be a bad idea to wouldn't be a bad idea to refresh it or go over it which is not really a bad idea but uh, or it could mean that there is something wrong with it and we'll find that out as we go but uh, the guy's local he's on a lot of the He's on a lot of the, he's on Sloppy Mechanics page and like the LS swap, LSX swaps and solutions page, like all the, the basic pages. So yeah, now you're messy. So I mean, I don't, I really don't feel like the guy is trying to jerk anybody around. I know he sells a lot of stuff and he's pretty well known on the groups. So. I, I'm not really too concerned about it. I think it's going to have a lot of mud in it. Well, let's hope that there's no mud in it. <laughs> uh. Alright. Ooh, that looks shiny. Yeah, nice and... Can I touch it? Yeah, go for it. It's not even wet. It's not wet. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. It actually looks pretty good on the inside. Nice and nice and discolored. So I don't see anything weird going on so far. So let's pull the little piece of something. I don't know. It looks like a stick or something inside the pickup tube. But... I'm just gonna go through and pull this windage chair off. I gotta get a different wrench. 
So let's do this. This is the this is a 13. It's always kind of tricky, hard to get off. The detent on this wrench is like very strong. So I'm gonna go through and just crack these loose. Now the pickup tube is very sludgy. So I'm, I just want to check the gaps. Like I said, I just want to check them, make sure they're not like extremely small. Uh, I feel like they'll be okay. So I'm probably just going to check a couple of them. I'm going to try to avoid doing much of the driver's side. I'm probably going to check like number one and number eight maybe. I want to stay away from five and seven just because I'm a, a superstitious. So and five and seven are kind of notorious for uh, bad things happening to them and I don't want to touch them if I don't have to just because then I'll be blaming myself down the road instead of it just being like a natural hey it broke I'll be like oh it's because I touched it all right I'm just gonna crack them and then we'll use the we'll use the power tool so I don't drive you guys nuts Power tool, my power tool not go crazy on me. Hold these. Daddy, are we taking that shiny part off? Yeah, we're gonna take, we're gonna take the whole bottom off. Yeah. There's one over here, you'll be able to see this. There's a chain on there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So when I... Can I put them down? Yeah, I can put them down. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to have to pull it apart if I don't... If I don't have to, but if we find something weird, maybe we'll go farther. But other than that, I just kind of want to leave it how it is. I don't really plan on going too high with the boost on this thing. Maybe like, maybe like 14, 15 pounds. It's going to have two turbos. So, I mean, it's going to move a lot of air. I don't really feel like I'm going to need a whole lot of boost really with two of them. So, we'll try to keep the boost like mediocre, 15 at the highest. That's the current plan. We'll see how that goes. So this is the windage tray. That's a reluctor wheel. This is? Yeah, it's not a gear, it's a reluctor wheel. It looks like one though. It's for a sensor. So there's a hole over on this side. Come over on this side. We saw a sensor today. Yeah, we did see a sensor, but that sensor was for a transmission. So this one over here, see this hole right here? That's for a sensor? That hole is for a sensor, and then it senses these little teeth on here. So, there is one little mark in here. I'll show you guys on top of the, on top of the crank, it actually looks like something might have hit the crank. So I wonder if there's a, I wonder if there's a bent rod or something. Watch out, baby. It's dirty. Yeah, it is. Ooh, dirty. that's, that's cool. Keep spinning it, Dad. So I'm kind of wondering. I'll show you guys the mark I'm talking about. There's a little mark on top of this uh -oh, balancer here. I don't know if that's normal. I don't, it doesn't seem like it is. I've never seen that before. Looks like it's hitting something. But I don't know. I'll look at it and see. So we'll keep we'll keep digging. Go we'll look and see if one of those. Uh, one of those rods has been. Is oil. It is oil, yeah. So that's gonna be number the number eight. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna pull that one out anyways. 
Did you even know that I actually got your dirty? <laughs> so I'm gonna pull that number eight out. Just like I had planned. Yeah, well, you're just gonna get more dirty anyways. I don't want to get your hands dirty. Your hands dirty? Your hands are dirty. My hands are gonna get dirty. It's part of the game, dear. I don't like it. I'm gonna pull this one off. I really hope that there's no mark on that. Like. I think that's how engines should be. Here's the bearing, number eight bearing. This thing is pretty, pretty nice looking. So no issues. I wanna see the bearing. It looks like a skate park. <laughs> a skate park? Yeah, I could drive my little skateboard on it. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe. Just trying to get this oil out of there. I yeah, that one looks oil. looks pretty nice. It's a little interesting discoloration there, but that's where the bearing was. Yeah. All right. Shh. I was cleaning that spot. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna pull this one out. We're pulling the other bearing out. Can I pull the other bearing? Well, I gotta pull it out. It's gonna be connected to this rod. Eight twenty one. Show you were watching. I want to hold a piston. Hold on. I'm just the, looking at everything. Are pistons heavy? No, oh, they're not heavy. You've touched pistons before. I actually held it one. <clears throat> you did. I have a video of you holding some pistons, playing Yay. with them. Because we took apart that we took apart that Volkswagen engine. Remember? I remember that. <laughs> Well, last right. time so we don't. took apart an engine. So don't touch this bearing or lose this bearing. I remember when we took apart a big engine and you had a bunch more engines. So the coloration is kind of odd there, and but were... but other than that, the bearing looks really good. There's no scuffing or anything anything strange. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the cap back on, and then I'm going to pull the rings off, and we'll look at. We'll look at the ring gap. I can see which piston we took out, Dad. Yeah. It goes in there. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to take the, the top ring off. And then I'll take the second ring off. So I do have a little bet going on my... Uh, a21 Bravo Facebook page right now. I asked a couple hours ago for people to start posting guesses what they think their actual ring gap is going to be. So we'll see. Uh, I said that we can do a, like a little contest. If whoever gets the closest will get a shout out at the end of this video with their project name. So, so uh, the oil ring looks like it's a little stuck and kind of gunky. So. Maybe that means I'll go through all of them. I don't want any of these rings to be seized up. So maybe I will pull them and just go through them anyways. But let's see what the gaps are. So if you guys aren't familiar with these rings, the top ring is a little bit narrower, a little bit skinnier than the other one. So it's not as deep. So the top ring, you can see that there's, you can see that there's two different depths. So this one on the bottom, is the right here is the the top ring this one on the top is the second ring so you can see that they're actually two different depths so they're kind of easy to identify <coughs> so I'm gonna take the top ring put this one in first and then we'll and then we'll check it so that's what I usually like to do I'll stuff it in like this twist it and then I'll just take this piston and and stuff it back down. I might actually get a different piston because that one still had the oil rings on it. So I want to be able to put it like an inch down in the bore. So 
So I'll find one that doesn't have a find one that doesn't have any rings on it off my off my pile. This one's this one's my go-to right here. This one's got a hole in it. So we'll stuff this down like an inch. Oh, jeez, silly boy. Man, this is a, Wow, I'm so used to working on my, my six liter. This is a four inch bar. Holy moly. That's the wrong one. Yeah, obviously my, uh, my... Pistons are wrong? Yeah, the piston was wrong. <laughs> well, that was kind of funny. I'm so used to working on a six liter and I got all like six liter parts. So we'll push this thing down and get it about as even as we can get it. Is this piece? Yes, leave it here. And then we'll just go and check the gap. I'm going to start at like 22 and see where that is. 22 is... Huh. 23 is oh. loose. Let's go to 25. 25 goes in. 26 goes in. Let's see 28. 28 goes in. Thirty goes in, but it's really, really tight, and I had to kind of wiggle it. So I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna double, double check it. We'll pull it out. <clears throat> Do this again. Let's see if we can even. We'll use the ring compressor, and we'll get it down a little bit more. Just to, just to see. Get it a little bit farther down. Because I usually like to go... kind of to where this part of the, the piston skirt is. Let's try this again. Is oil green? No, oil's not green. Is oil black? The oil that's coming out of this is black. It's like a dark brown. All right, there we got it down a little bit deeper. They're trying to Maybe put it down all the way. Make sure it's straight. That's oh, not the wanna... way that we put it in there. I just want to put it in a little bit deeper. So, yeah. This is a feeler gauge. So guys, you can see this 28 thousandths. Twenty-eight thousandths is actually is actually going in. So top ring was at twenty-eight. Now let's look at the second ring. That's a lot, a lot bigger than I thought. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Not that I'm, not that I'm upset about it, but it's actually pretty good. The bigger, bigger the better, I guess, for the boosted application. So, I've, I've ran my gaps at thirty before, thirty thousandths. But this is actually big for a uh, three point seven eight inch bore. I've ran 30 thousandths and like 26 thousandths on a 4 inch bore. So this one per inch of bore is actually pretty big. Yeah, this is at 28. Yeah, hold on. So this is, so these are both at 28. And I'll show you guys that again. A little hard to see. Twenty-eight thousandths. Twenty-eight 
28,000. So both of them are at 28. That's just on the number eight cylinder. So I'm gonna try a couple different ones and see. That oiling ring was kind of tight, so I'll, I'll pull another one or two and we'll see what those look like. If they're, if the oiling rings are okay and they're still both around 28 for top and bottom ring, I'm just gonna leave it. So if we look at the look at this spec here, so 28 thousandths divided by the cylinder bore, it's 0 .007 per inch of bore. So that's actually like a pretty pretty big gap. So that's good for a very high amount of boost. So usually go for like 0 .0055 per inch of bore is sufficient for like zero to 15 pounds of boost ish, but this is already gap for un enough, we'll say that. All right, so putting this thing back together, obviously the dot's gonna go towards the front of the engine, but I'm gonna put the second ring on. As I said, this is the wider ring, this is the second ring, and the top ring's a little bit narrower. You can see the thickness difference, the depth di difference. So I'm gonna do what all the instructions say not to do, and then wind this on as a, as a coil, I don't know, a lot of a lot of instructions say don't do that, like for for piston rings. Don't wind them on. You got to use the tool and split them apart. But yeah, okay. So I'm gonna. Oh, I didn't mention there's also a dot on there. If you guys don't know, it's your first time ever seeing this. There's a dot on the top, and the the rings are actually specific. So you have a uh, oil ring for lubrication. You have this the second ring, it's like a compression ring and it has a, a bevel on it so it actually scrapes the oil back down. And then the top is your compression ring. So they're kind of directional and they go a certain way. And if you flip-flop these rings, they can be a problem because the, the ring only goes so deep into the like that groove is only so deep. So if you put this thicker ring in, it's not gonna work right. So what I'm gonna do now, this is towards the front of the engine. I'm gonna take the top ring, and I usually just go 180 with the gaps. So I set the gaps kind of opposite of each other. I usually just do 180, and then I try to keep it offset from the, from the wrist pin, or from the direction of the, the rod. So I kind of go at it like an angle, and have these at 180. I'm gonna pull the pull the cap back off, and then we'll use our fancy uh, fancy ring compressor and slide this thing back in. So I'm actually gonna use just a little bit of assembly lube, fresh Lucas Oil uh, assembly lube on there, just to kind of coat it a little bit. Just because I wiped all the I wiped all the old sludge off of it. If the old sludge was still on there, I probably would have kept it. So, just slide this thing in there. Got this thing from Summit on eBay. It was like 30 bucks. So, good investment. If you guys are ever thinking about doing this or you're dealing with those little clamp band ratcheting piece of shit compressors, definitely uh, just buy one of these. There you go. Just slam it in. And then now I can kind of line it up, get it on the crank. I'll go ahead and flip this thing back over. Repin it. And I'll do the same thing with the with the cap here. I'm gonna clean this cap off. I'm going to use a uh, surgical grade cleaning equipment here. Put another little border of assembly lube on it. If you mix up the caps, like which direction, you forget which way they come off. Like they go off and they go back on. The, the little tangs here, where the bearing is, they're always going to go together. So this side is over on the driver's side. Then just kind of verify as you suck it down that the, the caps are actually touching.
All right, so now that this is tight, I'm gonna torque it back down. See what I have it set at? I have it set at like 60 right now, so I'm gonna take it back down to like 55. I, I normally do 55. Um, you can probably go a little bit less than that because I go to like 52. A couple times they've gone to 55 and you can feel them start to get a little squishy. That's what happened on my uh, the motor on my truck. There was a couple of them that I went to 55 and they started to feel a little bit soft like they were stretching. So we'll see. I remember which pistons it was. I know it did it on number 8. Same one I'm doing right now. So we'll see if that rod flies out one of these days. So this is at 52 right now. So that should be okay. Now I'm going to go through and do a couple other ones. But other than that, everything's looking, looking pretty good. I was looking at this groove a little bit more. Maybe I'm not too worried about it. Those actually look like a machining line. And then now I found one on here too. And this one's, this one's completely caked, completely black. So just like the rest of it. So I didn't see any on the other ones. I don't know if you guys have seen those. I've never seen that groove in a crank before. And I've been inside these things uh, enough. So we'll see. But everything looks like it's fine. It's not It's not actually lined up with anything on the piston where it would have been hitting. And everything seems like it's fine. It looks like a machining mark. So yeah, I'm going to pull a couple more and we should be good. All right, so let's look at the other one. I got <clears throat> piston number one out. I already checked it. So I checked number uh, the top ring and I checked the second ring. And once again, 28 thousandths. You can see it in there. 28. So I can actually, like same as the other one, I can squeeze the 30 in there, but it's really tight. So with all four of the rings. So I'm going to call it 28 and 28. Um, or a very, very tight 30. So I think I'm just going just gonna to go with it. Clean it up a little bit. I was a little concerned when I pulled this one out because the the rings inside of the rings looked a little milky so that could just be from you know pulling the heads off water sitting in it uh it looked milky but i mean nothing else inside of it looks bad the the bearing again looks perfect so i'm just gonna put that one back in and then just leave it how it is so everything else looks fine uh i checked the, the front and the back on opposite sides so the front should be the last one to get the oil flow so the front bearing very front bearing is good so I, I think I saw enough I'm not gonna pull it apart any farther than it needs to be I'm just gonna leave it and we'll call it good all right so we'll do this again so you guys this compressor I'll do then this is not a paid promotion disclaimer I just love this thing Maybe if I remember, I'll put a link in the description. If I forget, you guys can harass me about it in the comments. Uh, so, yeah, and if you guys ever want anything or see anything that you want me to put a link to, just yell at me, and I'll try, I'll try my best. So, get the skirt in, push it down. I mean, I spent so many years using that dumb fucking ratcheting piece of shit compressor uh, why would you do anything different? I don't know. These things are just amazing. And I know there's going to be somebody in the comments that's going to say, Oh, well, you just got to know how to use it. And it works fine. Well, I don't really care. This thing works better. You take two thumbs and you push it down. And then you never think about it again. That seems pretty good to me. I'm gonna throw this cap back on again. We're gonna take the, gonna take both the tangs. Make sure the tangs are on the same side. These are all on the driver's side, and I'll tighten these down, and then we'll torque it. Torquey, torquey, sporky, sporky. Oh, and if you guys noticed, I even used I even used a half inch to loosen it this time. Isn't that amazing? I 
didn't use my torque wrench to loosen it. I'm only using the torque wrench to tighten it. I'm like almost a professional now. I think. I think that's what that means. Because I had a bunch of professionals yelling at me when I used my torque wrench to loosen a bolt once. The world's going to explode. <clears throat> yeah, maybe it would throw off the calibration a little bit. I don't know. Worst case scenario, but every time I read comments like that, I think about the time that I I uh, did a set of pistons and I didn't use a torque wrench. I just did it by feel, and then everything was fine. That was only one time, though, and I did blow that one up for unrelated reasons. So I'm just going to go through and double check all the all the rod bolts, make sure that they're they're all good. So, I don't know what to think about that ring gap. I mean, it's it's good. I mean, there it's a very large gap. So, this being a, an unknown mileage motor, it could very well be uh like, you know, a, a high you know, mid 200,000 mile engine. I've I've checked ring gap on like a 180,000 mile LQ4 and the ring gap was at like 26,000. And I've done the same with uh, like a 300,000 mile and I want to say that one was at like 28 or 30. So this could just be a very high mileage engine. Uh, and pulled out for some other reason, even though it's a, a newer one, 2008, 2009. Doesn't mean that you couldn't put that many miles on in 11 years. So I'm going to put this thing all back together now. So I also went ahead and took the valley cover plate off. So this is, the, this is a DOD motor. So if you guys aren't familiar, the DOD is a displacement on demand. So basically it's... Uh, Oriel, Oriel here AFM, so active fuel management. So it'll basically disable four of the sets of lifters. So when you're at cruising speed, it'll run on four cylinders for fuel economy. So essentially what's happening, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but uh, you have your oil supply. Your oil supply comes into your valley cover up here. Just like it would normally come in where you're like on a Gen 3 block where your oil pressure sensor is, it actually comes up, comes into the valley cover. You have your oil pressure sensor up top, but there's also a little channel inside here for the oil to come in. So the oil will travel in. You got a plug on the back that controls all these little solenoids inside here. And one of the reasons I wanted to take this thing off is just because it's dirty as hell and I was dropping shit everywhere. But you can see that there's these little O-rings, these little parts of the gasket that go on top of these towers here. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it just bleeds off the oil pressure here. So you can see on all of these, there's a little clean spot where it looks like there's just oil flowing out. So I believe it uh, pumps up the lifters like it normally would. And then when it wants to go into the DOD mode, it basically just opens a solenoid and bleeds off the pressure and deflates the lifters. So it'll essentially disable the the valves for that cylinder and shuts off the fuel. So gonna disable this, get a new cover. I might actually go as far as doing the, I guess the, the proper method and plugging these holes. So they do make some plates that cover them up, but I think I might actually like Put something inside there to plug them. So we'll see where that goes, but I want to get this thing off of here because this thing is dirty as shit and it just keeps dropping stuff everywhere. So every time I touch it, now I gotta clean a bunch of stuff out again. So you can see it all on my finger and just dropped a bunch in here. So I'm gonna be pulling the cam out. Gotta get a cam yet, gotta get some other parts, but we're gonna keep keep ripping. We'll get this thing done. Alright, so for the guesses. We'll go over the guesses that were on the A21 Bravo Facebook, A21 Bravo YouTube Facebook page. Um, 
So we had basically two winners. I had one that was the closest, and then while I was editing this part, somebody else uh, had a closer guess. So the original first guess was Jonathan Clark. Uh, he has a 2000 Silverado that he's basically doing a, a Don't BS Me clone, and he says it's his first build. I'm pretty ignorant, so I figured since the 4.8 came factory, it would be a little more straightforward. Ring gap on my motor, we're all over 30 thousandths. So, uh, yeah, so that should be pretty cool. There's some pictures of that. Looks like he's got a, just like a Gen 3 4.8 with a Trailblazer SS intake on it. So that looks pretty cool. And uh, if you guys don't know what the Don't BS Me build is, if you're here somehow and you don't know what the Don't BS Me clone is, basically the slide mechanics, Matt Happel did a, he called it a Don't BS Me build. It was a 4.8 uh, in his Colorado. And that's basically what he's trying to replicate. So Matt did the whole budget build and then documented everything and made a list of parts for people and has a tune on the tune cabinet so people can basically copy that build and then load the tune and they should be pretty close with a mostly reliable build. They might have to dial some things in and change some stuff, but uh, basically that's what it sounds like he's copying. So that should be pretty cool, fun for him. And the whole, like, I'm pretty ignorant comment, um, especially if it's your first time doing it, uh, don't worry too much about it. Like that's why people like Matt and I try my best to help people. I don't know a whole lot, but I like to share what I do know and what I figure out. So there's information out there and you just have to know how to find it. So that's the big thing is a lot of people don't actually want to go out and try to find the information. They just want it given to them. So as long as you're willing to do the work and try to figure out how to do stuff on your own, uh, you'll be just fine. So don't worry about that. And who else do we got? We got Peter Worland. So Peter Worland has a, he's doing a, looks like another older Silverado. And, oh, no, there it is right there, duh. 89 C1500, 2001 LQ, LQ4, he's gonna do a nice set of pistons and rods, Wysico and K1 billet rods, 317 head, sloppy stage two cam, beast, 4L80. Holly Dominator, Precision 80 mil, and Yukon Posi. So I would say this is kind of maybe the the flip of the Jonathan Clark build. So there's more of a budget build, and then it sounds like uh, Peter's doing more of a little more high dollar uh, high dollar build. So <clears throat> just two different perspectives. Uh, one's going for budget. One's going to spend a little bit more, but will probably handle it a little bit more. But it kind of you kind of got to figure out what you want to do. If it's your first time doing it, Jonathan, that makes a whole lot of sense that you would want to try to do a budget build that's well documented and just to get your feet wet. You might get done doing it and realize you don't even really like doing this stuff that much. So that's that's another reason why not to start spending a whole bunch of money unless you really know you're going to enjoy it. So that's my take on it. Thanks for participating, guys. Oh, and I never even talked about what the guesses were. So Peter had 25 top and bottom. Or 25 top and 27 bottom, and it was actually 28, 28, so he was the closest. And then uh, Jonathan had, uh, what was his, 24 top and 26 bottom. So he was the second closest. So thanks for participating, everybody. Fun little game. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.